Dr. Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Basic Science and Humanities, BVRIT Nursery. Course name it is Applied Physics, and today we are going for the problems on fundamentals of quantum physics. So these are the problems here. So several times it was asked in the internal exam and external exam, mid exams and end examinations. So the first problem for today is calculate the wavelength associated with an electron with energy 200 mega electron volts. So this is the problem given. So from this, so it is given for the energy. So energy is given here. And we have to calculate the wavelength associated with these electrons. And so first of all, we are writing that energy. So given data, that is energy equal to 200 MeV. Or we are converting this in terms of joules. 2000 into, we are writing the E value. That is what is E? E is the charge of an electron. So 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joules. So that we are converting the electron volts into joules by multiplying the charge of an electron. And we know based on the de Broglie equation, lambda equivalent to h by under root m e v. So where h is nothing but Planck's constant and m is the h is the Planck's constant. And E is the energy, energy of the electron and M is the mass, mass of the electron. So this is the formula from which we have to substitute all these values and we will be getting that the wavelength associated with the electron. So we know that that is Planck's constant, its value it is which is equivalent to 6.625, so this is the value for h value, Planck's constant, 6.625 into 10 power minus 34 joules, this is the h value. And we know the value of the mass of an electron, so which is equal to, so 1.9 into 10 power minus 31 kg. And as usual it is given here, that is the energy of an electron, so which is 2000 into 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. So we are substituting here all the values and we are simplifying here. So this is the formula here. So once again I am telling it is lambda equal to h by under root 2me, where h is the Planck's constant. M is the mass, mass of the electron, E is the energy of the electron. We are substituting all these values, H value, M value and E value in the formula and we are getting the resultant answer here. So which is equivalent to the 0 0.0275 to 10 power minus 9. So which is the wavelength of the given, so it is in terms of angstroms and we are converting in terms of the, that is, we can write the same equation as nanometers, so 0 0.0275 nanometers. So this is how we can calculate the, that is, the wavelength associated with the electron if the energy is given as 2000 MeV. This is the first form, first problem. Now, second one, calculate the wavelength associated with an electron raised to a potential of 1600 volts. So, in this, the problem, it is given potential. So, this potential, it is given as 1600 volts and we have to calculate the wavelength for this electron. So we know based on the de Broglie equation, we are having a formula 
as a potential energy it is given here v equal to 1600 volts and based on the de broglie wave equation lambda equal to h by mv and we have modified this equation as lambda equal to 12.26 by under root v it is in terms of the angstroms so we can substitute the v value so v it is given it is v is given as 1600 so we are substituting the v value and we are find out in the lambda so lambda equal to 0 0.3065 so this is the after, after simplifying the, the equation that is after substituting the value here and simplifying we will be getting the the lambda value so where lambda is said to be called wavelength associated with the electron so here it is given as potential energy if the potential energy is given then we are using this the wavelength de Broglie wavelength equation lambda equal to 12.26 by under root v it is in terms of the angstroms so this is the second problem so these types of problems that we will be getting for our examination and the third problem it is given here the position of an electron in an atom is located within a distance 0.1 angstroms it is 0.1 angstroms using the microscope what is uncertainty in momentum of the electron located in this way so in this problem it is given the, the atomic the atom located that is we are getting it is given as delta x and we have to find out the momentum so uncertainty we have to find out so uncertainty in the position of the electron it is given delta x so which is equal to 0.1 into 10 power minus 10 meters so we are converting the angstroms in terms of the meters so one angstrom it is equal to 10 power minus 10 meters so instead of writing the in terms of angstroms so we are writing in terms of the meters and according to the uncertainty principle so we are having the equation delta x delta p equal to h by 2 pi delta p delta x equal to h by 2 pi where delta x is indicating the position delta p is indicating the the momentum so here in this problem delta x value it is given so we are cross multiplying here delta p equal to h by 2 pi into delta x so we are we know that h value 6.625 into 10 power minus 34 and where the delta x value it is given 10 power that is 1 into 10 power minus 10 so after substituting these values and simplifying so we can get that value as delta p equal to 1.054 into 10 power minus 23 kg meter per second so we are substituting the, the given values here and we are simplifying and we are getting the delta p value so which is equal to 1.054 into 10 power minus 23 kg per kg meter per second so here from this uncertainty principle so this is the uncertainty principle here delta p delta x which is equal to h by 2 pi so from this uncertainty principle so we can find the the momentum of the electron the next problem it is an electron is bound in a one dimensional box having size of 4 into 10 power minus 10 meters 
what will be the its minimum energy so here it is one dimensional potential box it is given and its size it is given as 4 into 10 power minus 10 meters then here we have to find out the minimum energy so in order to find this the minimum energy so we are taking the particle in a potential box so particle in a potential box the formula we know and before that the given data it is size of the potential box a equal to 4 into 10 power minus 10 meters so the box size it is given 4 into 10 power minus 10 meters and we know based on the one dimensional potential box en equal to n square h square by 8 m a square where so here n equal to 1 because we have to find the minimum energy the problem it is showing that the minimum energy so minimum energy means the n value should be equal to the 1 value equal to 1 and we know h value it is, a, it is said to be called the Planck's constant it is the Planck's constant then m is the mass of the electron mass of the electron and a it is given as the size the size of the one dimensional one dimensional potential box where the electron is moved so we know that n value we are substituting the n value here so which is equal to 1 so 1 square here we are writing and h value is a Planck's constant the so Planck's constant we are substituting here so it is the 6.625 into 10 power minus 34 so as it is h square we are taking the h square square of this one and 8 into m mass of the electron so mass of the electron it is given 9.1 into 10 power minus 37 kg and where a is the value it is given the size of the one dimensional box which it is given as 4 into 10 power minus 10 so we are substituting all these values and we are simplifying that the values here and we will be getting the, the resultant answer so here the minimum energy we are after simplifying so we will be getting the E1 equal to 0.0377 into 10 power minus 17 joules so this is the minimum energy so here we are taking the a potential box in a potential box we have taken the En equal to n square h square by 8m a square and we are substituting the values and we are simplifying and we are getting the E1 that is a minimum energy so in order to convert this value so if this is you can see that this is in terms of the joules so in order to convert this in terms of electron volts so we have to substitute this value that is we are dividing with respect to the the charge of an electron 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs so if we are dividing this the value with respect to the charge of an electron so we can convert in terms of the electron volts so in terms of the electron volts so that is the minimum energy is 2.3586 electron volts so if it is asked in terms of joules we have to calculate so this is the the joules and in order to calculate in terms of electron volts so we have to divide with respect to the charge of the electron and we will be getting the value so which here we are getting that 2.3586 electron volts coming to the the another problem so it is also based on the particle in a potential box one dimensional potential box so here 
the problem it is given an electron is bound in a one dimensional infinite well having a width which is equal to 1 into 10 power minus 10 meters find the energy values in the ground state and first two excited states so this was the problem given so here we know the given values the size of the potential box a it is given 1 into 10 power minus 10 meters so this was the value given here based on the our given problem and we have to find the ground state energy in the ground state and first two excited states and based on the the one dimensional potential box we are having an equation so which is equal to en equal to n square h square by 8m a square as usual if it is ground state so we have to take n equal to 1 and if it is excited levels then first excited state it is n equal to 2 if it is excited state 2 then we can say n equal to 3 so this is the ground state and this is first an excited state and this is the second excited state so we have to find out the that is for n equal to 1 the ground state n equal to 2 the first excited state n equal to 3 for the second excited state and as usual we know h is said to be called the Planck's constant is said to be called the Planck's constant and m is said to be called the mass of electron and a is said to be called that is width or width of the, the one dimensional potential box so where it is given here so a equal to a equal to 1 into 10 power minus 10 meters a value it is given now proceeding to the how we can calculate these values so here we have to take the n equal to 1 then n equal to 2 then we can go for the n equal to 3 now so we are taking the the ground state and we are substituting the n value here so here n equal to 1 so it is n square 1 square we are substituting and h value the Planck's constant 6.2625 into 10 power minus 37 so it is square of this and the m value mass of the electron so it is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 and a value it is given here 1 into 10 power minus 10 so a is square in the formula so we are squaring this value and so substituting these values here and simplifying we will be getting the the energy for the ground state that is even value so it is which is equal to after simplifying so we will be getting that e1 equal to 0 0.6038 into 10 power minus 17 joules so as usual in order to convert in terms of electron volts so we have to divide this the e1 value it is 0 0.6038 into 10 power minus 17 with respect to the charge of an electron so we know the charge of an electron it is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 so this is the charge of the electron if we are dividing here then we can convert in terms of the electron volts so after simplifying so we will be getting the that is e1 equal to 37.73 7 electron volts so here we are calculating the energy of the electron when it is in the ground state so this is the electron in terms of joules and this is the electron 
the energy of the electron in the ground state in terms of the electron ohms. Similarly, we have to calculate the for the first excited state. So, for the first excited state, so we are having that n equivalent to n equivalent to 2. For the second excited state, n equivalent to 3. So, we are substituting in this equation that is in place of n, we are writing as the 2. So, 2 square will be getting that e2 equivalent to 4 into e1 and we know the e1 value. So, we are substituting the e1 value and we are simplifying that is e2 equivalent to 4 into that is point point 60 38 into 10 power minus 17. Then after simplifying we will be getting in terms of the jobs. This is in terms of jobs. So, 2.415 into 10 power minus 17 jobs. Now, if we are dividing with respect to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19, so which is nothing but charge of the given electron, then we can convert in terms of the electron holes. So, if it is in electron holes, the value will be 150 into sorry 150.95 electron holes. So, based on the requirement, the question asked if it is asked in terms of joules. So, up to here it is enough. So, if it is asked in terms of the electron holes, so we have to find by substituting the that is dividing with respect to the 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joules that is the charge of the electron so that we can convert in terms of electron holes then so this is the that is first excited level that is when n equivalent to 2 now coming to the n equivalent to 3 that is the second excited state so for the second excited state so we are having e3 equivalent to in place of this n we are substituting the, the 3. So, 3 square it is 9. So, 9 into E1. So, here we are having that E1 value. Already we have calculated the E1 value. So, here the E1 value is it is 0 0.6038 into 10 power minus 17 joules. So, we are multiplying with respect to 9 and we will be getting the, the value so which is equivalent to 9 point sorry 5.434 into 10 power minus 17 joules and in order to convert in terms of that is electron holes so we have to divide this value with respect to the charge of the electron so which is equivalent to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joules so that we will be getting in terms of that is the electron holes. So after substituting this value, so we will be getting the 339.639 electron holes. So based on the, the question, so if it is should be converted into electron holes, otherwise we can keep it as in terms of the jobs. So, this is how we can calculate the energy of a given electron in a potential box, one dimensional potential box. And remember that the ground state is nothing but n equivalent to 1. And first two excited states, so excited state means the n equivalent to 2. Second excited state is nothing but n equivalent to 3. So, based on the the question, so we have to substitute the n values. And initially, you can calculate the ground state energy, electron in the ground state energy in terms of joules as well as in terms of electron holes. Then, if you substitute the, if you requirement it is n equivalent to 2, n equivalent to 3, that is indicating the first two excited states. 
then we can calculate the energy E2 and energy E3. So this is the how we can calculate the, the electron energy in the ground state as well as in the, the excited states, two excited states. So these are the problems, some problems will be coming. So based on this, the potential box, based on the Hansenberg and certainty principle, based on the, that is the de Broglie equation. Now, coming back to the, so how the questions will be based on these topics. So different questions will be, how the questions will be from these topics. So first question is, what are matter waves? Explain their properties. Generally, this question will be given for 4 marks. It will be given for 4 marks, maximum of 4 marks. And second question it is, explain the difference between matter waves and EM waves. So, this also, it will be given for 4 marks. And explain or describe Davison and Germer experiment and explain how it enabled the verification of matter waves, the wave nature of the matter waves. So, generally it will be given for the 10 marks question. So, depending on the requirement of the question, so you have to draw that Davison Germer experiment, experimental arrangement is there and we have to calculate the both experimental values and by using the de Broglie equation. So, generally it will be given for 10 marks question. The another question it is explain, state and explain Hansenberg uncertainty principle. So, this is also given for 4 marks question. And the next question it is derive the time independent Schrodinger wave equation for a free particle. So, this is sometimes it is given for 8 marks question. So, it is a derive the time independent Schrodinger, Schrodinger wave equation for a particle. Then another question it is explain physical significance of wave function. So, it is also given for 4 marks. And last question it is show that energies of the particle in a potential box are quantized. So, it is also given for 8 marks question. So, these are the questions that we will be getting based on the, the topics covered. So, I repeat once again, the matter waves, what are matter waves, explain their properties. The second question is explain the difference between the matter waves and EM waves and describe the Davison and Germer experiment which will be explain how it is enable the verification of wave nature of the matter. So, this is generally the essay type question. And next question it is explain, state and explain Hansenberg uncertainty principle. So, it is a short question which will be given for 4 marks question. And the next question it is derive the time independent Schrodinger wave equation for the particle. So, it is also an essay question. And the next question it is explain the physical significance of wave function. So, it is given for short answer, it will be given for the 4 marks. And the last question it is show that the energies of the particle in a potential box are quantized. So, it is given for the, the 8 marks question. So, these are some questions, the pattern how we will be getting for the mid exam as well as for the end examination. So, based on the requirement of questions, the marks given and you have to present, then you have to present in the examination to get the full marks. So, thank you for this day. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.